guys, before we get into Seer and how to make her nuke like an absolute monster, I want to thank today's video sponsor. Let's hear a quick word from them. Today's video is very special because it's sponsored by a brand new game that was just announced at GDC. It is King Arthur Legends Rise. So King Arthur's Legends Rise was previously known as Project Knight. It's going to be a squad RPG, guys. I'm really excited about this one. It should be a game changer in the genre. We got mythical weapons, we got Arthurian quests, and even crossplay between PC and mobile. So what makes this game so special, guys? Well, let's start with the characters. We're talking knights, we're talking rogues, we're talking mages, everything from the kingdom of Avalon and Arthurian legends. You can collect these characters, add them to your group, and level them up as you go. The game is also designed around these relics of these heroes that you can collect along your way. You can use them to strategically hone your champion, build the perfect weapon, and add that awesome layer of strategic depth and customization to this game. So as you make your way through quests and battle fearsome monsters with your party, your job is to basically take the battle-torn land of Camelot and, well, rise it up again, defeat the forces of evil, squad up, and dominate. So guys, I have a really special opportunity for you that I don't do often here on the channel. I'm going to give you an opportunity to join the open beta testing for this game before it goes live. So click the link in the description below. Uh, you're going to go ahead and sign up on Google Play Android. Select region starting with Mar starting on March 27th. You can also uh, go ahead and check out the wish list below and stay up to date with all the latest news about this amazing game, King Arthur Legends Rise. Thank you, King Arthur. Arthur Legends Rise for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, I'm sure coming out to you today in Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, we're going to talk some seer today, but before that, how you guys doing? Send some positive vibes your way today. I'm in a good mood, about to hit the movies with my kiddo. I know I've been sharing this last, like, I don't know, six months here on the channel. For the three of you who care, we beat Castlevania Dracula X for the first time. We're trying to get through every Castlevania game from one all the way to God knows how many there are, and we're super into it. Like, once we beat one of these old school video games for Super Nintendo, uh, we like party around the house and it's uh yeah I'm in a good mood I'm in a good mood it's a big day here big day in the Ash household anyway guys I can't for the life of me I thought the guy tweeted me but I could be wrong he might have emailed I have no idea but somebody asked me a long kind of uh, few paragraphs with screenshots about Seer and it struck me that I have not released a Seer guide in a couple years and there's a lot of ways that this guy again I don't want to call uh, you know I'm not gonna, I forgot the name anyway I forgot the actual screenshots I was looking I found this one I found the the drives VR says please show the Seer built <laughs> so I cannot see anything I found that at least the guy made a lot of mistakes and he was wondering why he wasn't getting the damage out of a seer that everybody else was that he saw on YouTube and such. And I figured we kind of go through all of those mistakes and maybe you're making one, maybe you're making none, but at least show you the way that I prefer to build seer and also damage test quite a bit. We're going to damage test with no masteries. We're going to damage test with different tier six masteries. We're going to talk about, you know, a few very, very common mistakes as well. So let's get to and blessings because blessings are super, super important. Let's start there, guys. On your and I need to do this too, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the my wish list. Where is my So what where is the wish list again? Oh, right in the freaking first thing, Ash. Okay, she is there. We really, really, really want Seer to be on our wish list. I know it's only a two times chance. I know, I get it, it's it's stupid, but we want Seer to have blessings. Ideally, a six star awakening. I don't have one, I have a two tar a two star, excuse me, awakening. But a six-star awakening on Seer is one of the nastiest things in the game, and we'll tell you why in just a moment here. First, let's get to our Seer. So, by the way, on my Seer build, you will see, by the way, no masteries here, so we're going to kind of go through the offense side uh, together. Uh, but you'll see the first thing to notice here is that even though I'm certainly endgame uh, and have great gear on other champions i've used the same gear on seer for a long time now i've never really upgraded too much you know uh and it still gets the job done just fine there's a lot of seers out there especially if you look like end end game uh with 350 360 370 crit damage on them so we're really low in the crit damage department of course we can get some of that boosted up vis-a-vis -vis masteries depending on where we go uh but 
you know, it's nothing crazy, okay? Uh, let's look at her qu kit really quickly here. She has a, a an A1 knockout ability, extra 20%. She has a granting extra turn when she's booked. Uh, it's a 3.8 multiplier, but keep in mind her base attack is 1145. It doesn't scale that well. And frankly, I ignore the attack stat when I'm building Seer. So that would be mistake number one, is my man was rocking a Seer uh, attack percentage on her chest. Uh, he had attack on all the, the, the ring and on the banner. Listen, there's nothing wrong with going a little bit of attack on this champion, just because we're going to build, be building with a lot of crit rate and a lot of crit damage anyway. So, you know, getting a nice hit on the A1 can be helpful. It does deal a significant amount of damage. Uh, so it's a nice to have. And as a matter of fact, I think I do have attack on my ring. You know, that's it. Everywhere else is going to be HP, because then we just care about her survivability for the most part. There's really no extra reason in her kit at all, because the A3, there's no scalability whatsoever based on attack. So attack is not a priority. There's really no reason that you should have attack percentage on this champion's chest. Unless, again, you're really trying to knock him out with that knockout A1. Clan Banner, her A2. This is mistake number two that he made, and this is a big one. Anybody who makes this one out there, uh, this should be the first thing that you fix. So you'll see this. Increased crit rate on all allies for two turns, 30%. But it's not just her A2. It's also a problem with Mausoleum Mage. Because Mausoleum Mage also brings 30% increased crit rate, increased defense, and block debuffs. Why am I mentioning Mausoleum Mage? Because he's the number one preferred partner with Seer. I'll take some adjustment now that I know the bishop's going to be there, but I'll beat her to the punch. Hi. What about we? Why are you wearing the hairnet? You're bald. He's a fairly accessible epic champion, at least he's not a legendary, who brings three unique buffs on one ability, right? So it's all about charging up Seer with as many buffs as we possibly can to take full advantage of the Karma Burn ability. It scales quite a bit for each extra buff that you have on your team. So whether you're A, because he even said in the email, he said in the, in the whatever the message, he was like, yeah, so you might be wondering why I have her built at 70% crit rate. Uh, and of course I was. <laughs> and then he said, well, it's not because of her A2. It's because I have her being set up by Mausoleum Mage. So he's going to put the increased crit rate. That allows me to just focus on crit damage only. And then she's going to nuke the heck out of him and have 100% crit rate because of the 30% crit rate. And I'm like, but, 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 but read the A3, dude. Read the A3. Forget that, man. You're evil. Remove all buffs from all allies and enemies, comma, then attacks all enemies, right? So we're not getting we're not taking advantage of increased crit damage, increased crit rate, increase anything. She has no buffs when she's attacking all enemies because she's removing them. So we do not want 30% less crit rate, whether you're cycling from the A2 to the A3 to take advantage of her own increased crit rate, or whether you're setting her up with somebody like Mausoleum Mage, okay? That's mistake number two on this champion. And of course, again, we want as many buffs as possible. That's why thing, little things, even like somebody in an immunity set, someone in a stone skin, somebody in a, a shield set, a bolster set, is really going to help activate more damage from here. I would always run at least one champion in a shield or a bolster set alongside Seer. Uh, we have Mausoleum Mage ran in that in that fashion. Mistake number whatever, three that he was making is the setup for Seer. We all know that Seer needs to go last on your team, right? All the buffers need to go before her. All the debuffers need to go before her. But he was running a team. I forgot exactly who he was running, but it was Mausoleum Mage was the main buff provider. And then it was Seer. And then it was like, you know, a, a few other support champions, like Archmage Helmet and a couple other support champions, maybe like an Allure. I think it was a Fire Knight run, right? But he wasn't getting through the waves. And I said, well, where's your debuffer, man? Where's your debuffer? And he's like, oh, you don't need debuffers with Seers. I didn't, I didn't think you needed a debuffer with Karma Burn. I'm like, well, why, why wouldn't you need a debuffer? Like, you know, they're not removing all debuffs, just all buffs. So yes, uh, setting up Seer with a debuffer, it might sound obvious to a lot of you guys, but it really matters, you know? And I can kind of see, she's just like such a unique champion that I can kind of see where you're just like, and she still does a ton of damage without debuffs, to be clear. Just not as much. And I'll, I'll prove that to you guys. We'll, we'll do a quick run with 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 and without a debuffer for the enemy team. Again, she's bringing Weaken, so she's bringing a debuff of her own. A big version of Weaken is actually really great, so you can set things up even if you can't. You might be saying, Ash, but like, I can't get enough buffs and have a debuffer on the team. That's why a champion like Lydia is amazing. She brings both. But we'll talk more about that in a bit. Blessings. Crushing Rend all the way on this champion regardless i mean i don't think there's any even any other choice out there of course you can do whatever you want to do but if you want to maximize your damage and let's talk about why this is so freaking powerful if you get it to six stars 
Uh, let's just go all the way down. Each hit will ignore a percentage of the target's defense. We'll ignore 1% defense for every 10 levels. Right now I'm at one star is 1% defense for every 50 levels. Then I get a little extra attack. You get crit damage 20% at level four. But look at this guys, 1% for every 10 levels. Heck, these mobs have like 350 levels. That's insane. I've seen like people go take their seer from doing like, I don't know, 1.3 million damage to like 2.2 million just off of getting that one blessing. It's nasty, it's insane. So just put her on your wish list and just keep your fingers crossed. What can I say, you know? Uh, but you will not be seeing that here, but boy, is that amazing. All right, let's talk masteries. Before we pick out the offensive masteries and talk about really the mistake of not going with the proper ones, let's run her without any offensive masteries first. And then again, we'll go ahead and waste our gems so you don't have to. You can try it if you want. And uh, we'll, we'll compare the, the different options, right? So we do have speed on the boots. We have HP percentage again on the chest. We just care about survivability, really. We don't need any attack. Uh, crit damage on the uh, gauntlets. We have a savage gear on her and we have uh, crit damage gear. So I really love running savage and crit damage. I suppose you could run savage and uh, cruel uh, to get a little bit extra uh, ignore defense. Ignore defense does really well against other champions in this game. We have on the banner accuracy, I'm sure. And then we have crit damage and attack. I guess an obvious mistake would be as well, not running her with enough accuracy. And again, well, we have a little extra accuracy here from the support tree, but I think I'd like a little bit more than 270. 270 is going to be fine for what we're doing because we're actually not going to be removing buffs because we're going to be doing dungeon waves. But for Doom Tower, a lot of those the, those champions are fast and they'll have buffs before you go. We would actually want this to be quite a bit higher, uh, probably around 370 for the higher stages of Doom Tower hard. So we'll go ahead and make that change as well. I wonder what I did because I used to have her uh, higher accuracy for Doom Tower, obviously. I use her in Doom Tower. Anyway, guys, I digress. We have crit damage, obviously, on the uh on the amulet let's go ahead and give her a run here without any offensive masteries so i'm just going to take her into ice golems 10 and this is the main team that i'm using in stage 10 seer activation team and then walking tomb dreng and uh and uh wither ah i don't have it on uh <laughs> i don't have the ai doing here we go so this is going to be with the debuffer setting setting uh seer up so we're going to come in here, going to land the debuffs, decrease defense and weaken on the enemy team. It doesn't matter what we do with Walking Tomb Drang. going to come in here, place an increase defense on everybody. And then we're going to slow it down. Take a look at the damage here that we're doing. 719 to 860. Uh, let's run it one more time. So 719 to 860 roughly, you know? Those are the two numbers that I saw at least in terms of the high and the low. And we're gonna do the same thing here. And then we're gonna back out. And again, 650 to 750 or so. We're gonna back out, edit team. And now first things first, we're gonna put Mausoleum Mage in. Now we no longer have a debuffer on the team, okay? And again, some of you guys, I never know in videos like this, you never know, but I saw that guy doing it, so I figured some other people might be doing it, not running a debuffer, because this is the same team, same number of buffs on my team, uh, once Mausoleum Mage goes, you'll see right here, same number of buffs, but we're not able to kill anybody because there's no debuffs. So there we go, right? So having a debuffer is, is, is important to maximize the damage. If you don't need it, you don't need it, you know? Let's go ahead and put Lydia back in, and we'll come back Let's see how much more damage we can get depending on what we choose as our masteries, okay? So, recently used first, go to Seer. Now, most importantly here, guys, and let me push myself out of the way, because this is super, masteries are really, really important on this champion. So think about it. We need the crit rate, obviously. We'll take the extra crit damage, right? Uh, we definitely want to pick up Heart of Glory, increase damage inflicted by 5% when attacking with full HP. Now these numbers don't sound high, right? 5%, but we're doing like 600,000 damage or, or more, you know? So yeah, it's really going to add up quite a bit. We're going to pick up a Whirlwind of Death, increase speed by six for each enemy killed by this champion. Just be careful of this mastery. You can screw everything up if you make her faster than the people who are setting the table with all the buffs or debuffs, you know? So just be careful with this one. 
uh, but it's still nice to have. Uh, increased damage inflicted by 8% on the first hit on each enemy, Ruthless Ambush. It's going to be a must-have. That's a massive damage increase. Now, you can go Opportunist. You notice that I'm running Prince Kaimar as a reset champion? Well, if I can set the table and kind of manage my team accordingly, I could potentially have everybody under a Sleep debuff, and I could get that extra 12% damage. But because I don't have my team built that way right now, I think I'm breaking that Sleep by, with somebody, with maybe Lydia. Either way, I'm going to Wrath of Slain instead, okay? I'm just basically using that as a way to get down here for a kill streak, increase damage inflicted by 6% for each enemy killed by this uh, champion, stacks across each round. What that's going to do is make the second wave a little bit easier to kill than the first wave, which is great. You know, we don't want any of those failures. Uh, and then we're going to start out with, we're going to start out with Warmaster. So now we have Warmaster as our tier six, bring it down. Also super, super important. Increases champions, uh, damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. It's almost always going to be the case. Always going to be the case against these mobs. They have tons of HP. All right, so now we have her with Warmaster. Let's check to see what the damage differential is. Now, again, Warmaster, I want to be clear here, is going to help you out more against the actual bosses, right? So if you're really itching for extra damage uh, from her A1 vis-a-vis -vis Warmaster against bosses, then hey, nothing wrong with going that route, uh, especially if you're already easily killing all the mobs. So of course, we always say this on the channel, but every account is different, every situation is different. Just trying to give you guys a barometer on how to maximize damage on waves right now. So gonna get Mausoleum out of there. Now we have War Master on her, along with all those other masteries, right? So let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna keep myself in this corner. Let's make myself a little bit smaller. Uh, let's see what we can do here. So it was like 700-ish, the damage. Well, you guys remember. Okay, so again, coming in with this buff. And let's slow it down and see now. We're looking at 900 to 1.1 million. So quite a bit more with War Master. Let's reset and compare the second wave as well. So we have the debuffs. We have, so man impressive numbers i have to say right let's try this round here she goes that was a weird one it was like five hundred thousand to like eight hundred thousand so let's go ahead and go on to uh ignoring more defense and helm smasher because this well well, you guys can you guys can be the judge so we'll go to the masteries I'm gonna do the same exact thing I'm gonna waste some gems here reset grab the same accuracy masteries come down the same thing that we did grab evil eye come down to master hexer that will help with the weekend against bosses and stuff like that we'll come down grab again crit, crit crit rate crit damage heart of glory whirlwind of death ruthless ambush come down with wrath of the slain and again, kill streak, bring it down. This time we're gonna go Helm Smasher. We'll keep it with Blood Shield as well. All right, so going right back to it here. Now we have Helm Smasher, ignoring more defense. This is, so we didn't lead off with the A2 in there, Kaimar, but it's not gonna matter either way. Here we go, and it's gonna be the moment of truth again. What are we looking at this time? 1 to 1.3 1 million to 1.3 million you see the difference that these masteries make compared to the first run it's a lot of extra damage guys a lot of extra damage and my i forgot the guy who i was talking to i forgot exactly what he was uh i forgot exactly what he was using he was using some of these masteries but a couple of them like ruthless ambush for example he didn't have ruthless ambush Man, that's a lot. You're leaving 8% of millions of damage off the table, you know? It's a lot. 8,000 damage, potentially, or more. Uh, so we're going to come back in again. Helm Smasher. 800 to 1.3 million again. So by far the best so far, Helm Smasher. Now we're going to compare it to Flawless Execution with extra crit damage. Now, kind of a spoiler alert here. In my testing, I've done a lot of testing with Seer, I found that Flawless Execution, I found that Helm Smasher is the best, excuse me. Uh, but I think that, that uh, Flawless Execution is very close in terms of wave damage. Again, I probably should just be cutting this part out, but 
You guys don't mind chilling with me a little bit longer, do you? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do bring it down again. Come over with blood shield. And this time we'll get flawless execution. Thus, increasing our crit damage to 294 now. So 294 crit damage. And here we go again. These poor ice golem mobs, man. They're going to be sick of dying here. So here we go. Uh, again, setting the table, coming in, A2, and I like the moon. Harrier. When I was a kid. Hi. Harrier. Okay, A2, and here we go. So one point, one, it, it's very close to Helm Smasher, right? I saw like a million to 1.3 million or so on that. Was that what you guys saw as well? So very, very close on the Flawless and Helm Smasher. Uh, let's go with increased defense, and let's do this one, slow it down. 900-ish, around 900. Guys, I, I hope you found this video helpful, as I was saying here. I'm gonna show you, this is Doom Tower Hard for 102 here. Uh, I just wanna show you the main team that I use uh, as my Seer activation team for Doom Tower because this video is especially relevant uh, when we talk about Doom Tower floors because there are no bosses. Thus, I would definitely stick with Helm Smasher. I would go War Master if you're already killing everybody easily anyway. Uh, you guys can see, no problem with these waves. Uh, the biggest thing about these Doom Tower floors is that uh, we want to make sure that we're going faster than the other mobs, right? Because the speed can certainly increase the higher that you get. But you can see this team is really good. And again, every time that we get through another wave, it increases our odds at killing everybody in the next wave, right? Because uh, we're getting all those extra mastery damage buffs from killing Wrath of Slain or whatever. So guys, I hope, again, some of you found this video helpful. Let me make myself bigger so I can give you a a sign off here. Uh, appreciate you guys watching until the end. If there's any other champions that you guys are having any sort of confusion around building, please go ahead and let me know and I'm happy to do an updated guide on them as well. Congratulations if any of you out there have a six star blessing ascended seer because I am super, super jealous. Guys, thank you for watching till the end and as always, take care guys.